welcome, welcome, ladies and gents. Your host Cam's back, and I got an exclusive guest, Ryan T. Richardson of Go Tell Someone Podcast Network and of the recent podcast, 20 Years of 24. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm, I'm again, I only watched two episodes of 24 this morning. So uh, I'm <laughs> you are pumped. <laughs> I'm a little behind. Every every morning, a little bit of breakfast, uh, and uh, an episode of 24 at least, at least one or two to start the day. So, uh, it's just we've only really seen it. Who knows how many times we got to watch it like five dozen more times. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little obsessed. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, that that will definitely come out as we talk for sure. Uh, well, it's it's pretty crazy the idea of even doing a podcast about 24. Um, just yeah. because there's there's nine seasons, uh, you know, plus legacy, plus uh, you know how many thousands of people that have actually been on the show, many of whom I always compare it to Seinfeld. Like you know how we, if we just binged Seinfeld, just finished it the other night, uh, and Sweet. hadn't watched. I ne- had never binged it, it ever. So my wife and I did that and just watched all the way through. And every episode, you're like, oh my gosh, I recognize that person from this. Terry Hatcher. What do you, like, there's so many people on Seinfeld that are now bigger stars. 24 is exactly the same way. When Absolutely. you watch 24, you're talking Rami Katie Malik. S- what? Yeah, Rami, Rami Malik. Yeah, Katie Sackhoff, you know, Mandalorian. Like, uh, Christy Mantopoulos, who played Mo on The Three Stooges. Like, and, he, and he just did two huge films with The Rock and uh, Chris, uh, Kevin yeah, Hart. he was in Netflix's True Story miniseries. Oh, he was my... very menacing. I was like, what? <laughs> that's that's yeah. from the I'm... office and everything. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, when you're watching, yeah, from the office. Yeah, that guy. He's and the cameraman crazy. operator in the final season. Everyone forgets. <laughs> yeah, because you can you can slap me at any point. But like we we talked to Chris on the show, Chris Diamantopoulos. I I can never mess up his name ever again. But he he's the nicest. <laughs> he is he is the, he's not only Canadian. He's the nicest guy in the world. And when we watched him on True Stories, it was like, oh my gosh, that that guy scares me right now. Like he was, he was uh, that was his that was the that was a villain. That's how freaky he is, just on screen. But yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, uh, all I think the this show is just going to be a fun takedown because I mean, well, we're not we're not doing a simple just you know episode by episode basis because how could we? right <laughs> someone's going to get lost along the way, especially when it's numbered that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, doing the whole season to me is, is a lot better because I mean, even though so much happens uh, every single hour, uh, it's it you can kind of kind of I, I did a refresher to kind of see the arc of season five and season six, which I think we're talking about today, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Season five and season six, mm-hmm. and it, it starts off with crazy. You know, season five starts off with arguably the most insane opening the show had ever had to that point, and maybe the most insane since. Sweet, yeah, absolutely, yeah. And uh, then, and then season six starts with a with a death that none of it I couldn't see coming. I, you know, there's no absolutely. way I could have anticipated. The, you know, there's many deaths, but uh, there's one that I still, when I watch it, I'm still shocked. I'm still shocked. It's crazy as I'll get out and. I don't think any show can begin a season that way anymore. Even the edgier ones that are still on. I mean, yeah. Uh, you don't know if it's certain guidelines or if they're afraid that they'll lose someone in the process that you don't right. know. Right. Well, I mean, I, I, I listened to the season one, season two uh, conversation you had, which was amazing. Everybody needs to go find it. And, uh, uh, <laughs> and I, the, the, the reference, the, uh, the reverence you had for person of interest, I thought was really good. Because that was one show that I thought the pilot itself sold me on the show. Like as soon as that yeah. came out of the gate, the first 15, 20 minutes, boom, like you're in, you're absolutely in. And I, and I, and I you know, in a, in a, a landmark, uh, landmine of TV shows where there's a new show that starts every day that stars somebody that you probably want to see, you really got to pick and choose where you're going to spend your time. Totally. And by, by the time it gets to something like even, when they're doing a reunion or f- conclusion movie yeah. like with Ray Donovan is like, okay, now I really got to ace it. Now I got to <laughs> catch up side of time and binge a season in one yeah. day. Yeah. I mean, Ozark, Ozark starts in about a week and a half and I got to go back and rewatch the whole That's series. That's the other thing too. Uh, I, I did that with the expanse as well, where I'm just like, Oh yeah. Okay yeah. guys, if we're going to do this. You have better not be hammered. You have better be ready and you have better, you know, we got to do five. Can't do two, can't do three. You will forget it. If yep. it goes the next week, guess what? 
I yeah. gotta even remember it, and I'm I don't have time to rewatch an episode just to get to the other episode. That's very right. frustrating. That's like yeah, yeah. rewatching the part of the movie you've already seen. That's just no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I gotta say, like my my the twenty years of twenty four podcast started uh, last spring, <laughs> and it was this idea that I had that the twenty years was coming up, and I I my dad taught me to to remember birthdays and anniversaries. And so I'm Sweet. the kind of goofball that posts on Facebook, hey, it's been 20 years since Die Hard came out. And then everybody's mad at me because I reminded them how old they are. But I think those <laughs> dates, I think those dates need to be remembered. I think, I think in many ways, Hollywood um, it's so hard to get the birthdays down right because like IMDb yeah. won't even list them right away. You pretty much got to go to like famousbirthdays.com or something like that. Yeah. And then yeah. Make your own meme and uh-huh. collage. Because like you say, yeah, it's like you, you got it. You can do it, but it, it's kind of like any post where it's like it was planned in advance. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, the, the my original plan is uh, let me give you a little bit of history. Sorry, I'm, I'm jumping no, it's into fine. this. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I again, I'm Canadian, so I'm going to say sorry a lot. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> I found I found my email uh, this morning. Uh, because I, uh, I I tend to keep stuff uh, surprise surprise, uh, but I found an email that I wrote. I f- somehow I found John Kassar, and again I, the the respect you guys have for John Kassar on the podcast I listen to is great because we're on the same page. But I found John Kassar's email somehow. Right. I don't even know how in 2010, and I wrote him a, an email that basically just said, "Look, why is there why isn't there a 24 convention?" I said, right. there's conventions of this, there's conventions of that. I said, and I said, I want to do a physical, like I live in Windsor, which is right on the border of Detroit. So we're a border city. Oh, I sweet. said, I had this idea. I had talked to a venue and I had said, let's do a 24 convention. Let's bring in like two or three guests. Uh, you know, like if we can get Kiefer, great. Like it, part of the draw too was I can get Canadian actors to come down from Toronto that, are, that were involved in the show. So I, 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 I put that up to him. <laughs> he, had, he had no idea who I was, right? I sent him an email. <laughs> And he sent me back within 24 hours. He sent me an e- email that said only this. And I read it this morning. It said, I'm interested. <laughs> nice. and, uh, so we had a conversation going back and forth on how this could work in 2010. And the only thing, the, the best piece of advice that he gave me was, your biggest challenge is going to be scheduling. He said, because they're working actors, they're working crew. And if they get a gig, you're going to have to take the gig. So you're going to have, you know, the possibility of cancellations, the possibility of changing, you know, your whole schedule and, and, you know, changing your advertising is a reality because you're going to have a hard time getting people to commit to a particular day. Even for a Zoom, that's just, yeah, yeah. it's going to be hard. Well, yeah. <laughs> so it comes said, in, the agent says, screw it, I'm not screw investing it. in you for this project. You yeah, suck. <laughs> totally, totally. So it was, the, it was honestly the best piece of advice you could have given me. He didn't know me from anybody, but it was the best piece advice you could have given me because I said, all right, I got to rethink this and I put it on the shelf. And then as we were getting closer to 2021, I said, oh my gosh, like a two, like a, in 2019, I bought the domain 20 years, 24.com. And then I started, you know, kind of gearing up to do a physical convention. So this was fall of 2019. I was very optimistic. I'm on with, that with same it. boat with you where it's just like, <laughs> you know, if you want to do it, if it's been six months and then like yeah. you say, then Basically, the remainder of the year is plan, 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 you know, yep. assessing, you know, editing, and then, you know, telling everyone, hey, stop being annoyed that I'm gone for so long. You know, you'll understand right. later. <laughs> you'll understand when it all comes together. I need you to trust me. <laughs> I need you to trust me. <laughs> either, either fire me or get out of my chair. That's basically what oh, I love that line. <laughs> get out of my chair. Get out of my chair. <laughs> so so I did this whole thing and, and had, was starting to gear stuff up. So this is like September 2019. I Again, I talked to venues. I talked to different things. I was starting to talk to booking agents. And then March hits. And then everything's, no, you can't do an actual physical convention, which, you know, in retrospect, worked out better for us. It totally in many ways. did. Yeah, because the likelihood we could get 44 cast and crew members together physically it was never going to happen but Isn't when it's it on... wild you know, so many jobs even started taking shortcuts that should have always been in place to begin with like <laughs> exactly yeah i do security and we had to do both uh like a digital and a physical report and then they switched okay, to yep. just digital i'm like yep. why was it all why, why wasn't it always just a digital <laughs> <laughs> or or uh, wiping down things or like cleaning, yeah cleaning movie theaters I why mean, wasn't never, cleaning you know. your hands already a thing people 
it was it was the most bizarre thing to go back into a movie theater and it was clean i'm like what 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 is this place i've been here before but it never no looked butter like this. and popcorn everywhere okay great yeah i mean <laughs> some of those things that are in place now i think need to stay i just did a survey for a theater uh should we always wipe down the theater yes you always should wipe down the theater forever like 100 percent. don't stop so yeah so i mean don Cassar steered me right and uh, and so when it came time to do this thing again uh, I started just, uh, I reached out to the first person that said yes to, to be on the podcast was Leslie Hope, uh, who was Terry Bauer on the show. Yeah. And she's and, become a director too. It's Oh, she's, yeah, I was, I, she's directed SVU. She's directed uh, Lost in Space. She's done, she did a lot of the episodes for Lost in Space and she's the, the new uh, Star Trek she's been yes, doing for the last Severian. year. I'm yeah. sure she'll be on Picard soon. And Yeah. It's, yeah. it's amazing how much, how much she's been, how much she's been doing. So we talked about, 24 and then we talked about everything she was she had going on and uh, and that that's when it started to take off like people said oh you've talked to leslie oh well, i'll talk to you and it and it, the credibility just it is wow well, that's all it takes is just you talk to my friend well yeah. they vet they vet everything you know they wouldn't just talk to just anyone <laughs> yeah it's it, it's called implied credibility mm-hmm. right oh you must be worth talking to because you've talked to leslie hope <laughs> and then I had, I actually had a guy from, from uh, Toronto area that got involved. He's a fan. And he, uh, he said, Hey, let me see if I can help you get guests. And I said, sure. But any, any help, uh, it's, it's six degrees. Right. And he says, well, I know Howard Gordon and I, his name's Justin. And I said, he goes, I know Howard Gordon. I'm like, yeah, sure. Sure. You do. And he said, no, let me see if I can get Howard. I'm like, yeah, sure. We're going to get Howard Gordon on a little. <laughs> that's had, that's had, sure two, you do. You're that's had two guests, two guests so far. <laughs> And uh, and within two days, he's like, Howard Howard's going to talk to us next Tuesday, and I'm like, oh my gosh, are you kidding? And fortunately, I had like four or five days. <laughs> yeah. Fortunately, I had four or five days to get ready because I was like, oh my gosh, I'm about to talk to Howard Gordon in the X Files and every other show he's of Awake. I, mean, I don't know if you ever saw Awake. Oh. I, I it's a I was another one killed before its time, and I mean, yeah, absolutely, I, I'm, I'm sure everyone was familiar with uh, Gordon as showrunner of the show's uh, work on Beauty and the Beast. And, yes, um, yep. Yep, uh, a bunch of other just short-lived, just federal agent and mystery shows, and it's kind of wild how, by this point here in season five and six, like mm-hmm. everyone's just getting even more and more crafty, and yeah, uh, uh but yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> so yeah, like a better word, it's uh, all these guys being on so many different shows is what makes them so good. Yes, yeah. they they know what everyone's expecting for every kind of audience in here, you know, I know Kassar hates it being called an action show, but I mean, it's both an action and a drama and a mystery. Oh, it's, so, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a combined, you can't, you can't separate one from the other. If no you way. take away, if you take away the action, it's not really 24. And if you take away the drama, it's not 24. Absolutely. Yeah. And most, and most some... shows exist on, on both on either side of that. Oh yeah. I, I even saw one of those like behind enemy lines movies that was also by Fox. And I was oh, like, yeah, yeah. These political scenes feel like an episode 24. I think if you yeah. cut out all this annoying, uninteresting war stuff, you'd have a pretty compelling political thriller, just, just the political stuff. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, it's, 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 uh, and again, the show itself got respect from all sides, which isn't, you know, isn't the norm. It's um, all so sides abnormal. Are and yeah. I just, I think we even talked about with the shield where it's just like, just everyone was ready to take a chance on anything before yeah. they gave cliff notes uh, or just network notes, uh, you know, years later. And yeah. it, it helped that when it finally got canceled, it was just because of money at that point. And at that point, everyone also was kind of just ready to move on to other stuff. So right, it is kind of interesting how kind of like sister show prison break, how it just kind of just got to that point where it was just like, okay. We we said everything we need to say, and <laughs> I, I got to tell you, you're the first person I've ever talked to that's that referred to Prison Break as a, as a sister show. I've seen a few fans who kind of secretly wanted a crossover because they're kind of on around the oh, same time. Yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, well, I I because I fully agree with you. And when people say refer to me, and I was responsible for getting I can name six households that I got hooked on Twenty Four just by giving them my box set. Uh, so much. So much so that I that I went to I go to pawn shops and I buy extra sets because I don't want to give my master set away. Um, but right, break you is, never know break. if the world goes to hell. You'll need that. <laughs> if Netflix shuts down for some reason or or uh, Disney Hulu Plus takes it down for the billionth Hulu. time, and then... yeah, yeah. Um, 
but but the funny thing was is that uh when people said well recommend me something else after 24 was done like i was their dealer uh i, said, <laughs> I automatically said prison break oh sweet because uh, prison break the the show this the word that keeps coming up when we talk to guests from the show 24 is pulse they said this show has a pulse like no other right because if, if you watch fbi for example which i love it yes. slows down it slows right down then it picks back up then they go to dinner and then they do this 24 yeah, you're hour. gonna have two filler episodes then you're gonna have five intense you know, yeah. hard hostage episodes and then but both the premiere and the finale are yeah. can't yeah. miss and like just say any other show doesn't do that and 24 is like every moment matters the minute you lose them you've lost them yeah. for the entire season yeah yeah i fortunately didn't get into prison break until i think season four was start was airing oh, or same season. i did it a few years back i was like i'd seen parts of it when it was on it's yeah just yeah. i could never it wasn't that i didn't want to it's just right it it had more mixed bag of reviews from both audiences and like critics. Right. So I wasn't sure if I wanted to invest the time and just yep. everybody had seen, it seemed like every show would start good and then start going downhill after a while. I like it all, but I just, I, I understood where everyone was coming from. And, sure. Yeah. I mean, there was a strike in there too, right? A writer strike. And yeah. here we're going to be diving into the writer strike for how it affected 24 and yeah. seven, but it's Absolutely. so funny how, yeah. I mean that, that show, it was always on it either after 24 or something like house and it was just like yeah, i can't watch I it all i i gotta yeah. do I, I got my homework i gotta go to bed soon i <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I threw all that stuff out the window for 24 in prison break where it's like yeah. it's four it's four in the morning i have to go to a meeting in three hours i i can do one more uh, <laughs> what's what's the point of going to sleep now might as well just keep watching it and i Absolutely. and i would do that it was crazy Coffee. <laughs> yeah it was crazy uh, I, i'll it's a worthwhile headache. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, I'll take the hit. I mean, if Jack Bauer can do it, I can do it. Yeah, if he can do two hours, and that includes every time he's knocked out, then yeah, I, I, I can do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, uh, so we are going to get into season five. <laughs> oh, season five. It's a doozy, to quote my grandfather. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't used the word doozy uh since the uh the, the uh, late 50s but uh, essentially it i know <laughs> well i mean i i watched this is how i i went to i went to like a, it was rogers video it was blockbusters canadian uh competition family and, and yeah uh, home video store so i went in there and i rented the first two discs because they were only renting like one disc at a time maybe two discs at a time oh man that's hard Oh yeah, so I, I took it home. I'm like, because what had happened was I tried to watch it in the middle of season one, and it was the amnesia episode, and I was like, okay, I already, I already don't know what's going on. <laughs> this is, this isn't a show like Law and Order where I can just drop in and I can understand no, what's going on. It's not entertaining. If it, you yeah. Know so as soon as the DVDs came out, I went and rented the first two because I'm like, okay, I got time. I'm just gonna sit in my apartment and just watch this thing and see how it goes. And uh, I literally watched two episodes. I ran it back to the store. I drove to Walmart to buy the whole set. <laughs> which was full which was full price probably at the time it was probably like 80 bucks oh it had to be something ridiculous yeah uh, that market was inflated back then yeah <laughs> and i'm super cheap but I, li I literally was like i got 80 bucks i can i can i have to own this like i'm already i'm like three or four episodes in and i already need to own this this isn't just something i'm gonna watch once i knew that early on oh um, totally and with the special features and all and then yeah. being one of the first to embrace that along with the, like the sopranos is like yeah you're going to buy it and then you're going to rewatch it. And then no. you because, there. because you're going to miss something the first time you watch it. You're going to miss something. The second time. I, I watch it now on Disney plus in Canada and there's still stuff that I go, Oh, it's I on never Disney did. plus. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. So that's how, yeah, because, because Fox of the Fox ownership, it. right? Right. Uh, so yeah, it's still here on Hulu in the States. No, that's cool. That, okay. Yeah. The more, but you I, know, <laughs> but I, I probably, I, I I'm scared to see how many times I've actually watched the whole series through. <laughs> I, it, 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 yeah, it, it, it's no, I'm not embarrassed. I mean, it's probably, it's probably 20, maybe 20 times all the way through. I probably watched it once a year. For the last 20, 20, 20 jokes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I, when it gets to 2024, still, well, where will we be? But I'll still watch an episode, and it comes up in in uh, with the Christopher Henderson storyline that when Jack stops and he, he looks at the camera, and he's like, "How could I be so stupid?" After Christopher Henderson locked him in the room, do you remember yeah. that scene? Uh, he totally. literally it's so, the only it's the only aside the only time he breaks the fourth wall a little bit, and he's like, "How could I have been so stupid?" <laughs> that like, was great. Yeah, and I never noticed like that a, before. 
they even just stock footage of that explosion like in season six somewhere randomly yeah and I'm like, I'm yeah like, oh why'd you yeah. use the explosion okay whatever. but i'd never i'd never noticed that before and i've seen it so many times there's so much but stuff we notice in every single episode or every single yeah every single episode there's some, there's somebody i recognize that i'm like oh i didn't know they were in 24 oh gee totally. which is awesome but season so, but season five i mean my gosh it opens with assassinations yeah three different characters who we come to love we've been so through the mountain there's even times where it's like i can't even watch this part of the episode it's just so yeah man, yeah brutal and yeah there are all New- kinds of actors and they're oh. like at the third stage of their careers there's a lot of people from like saint elsewhere type yeah. shows and it's like yeah they're young all guns. That giant uh, young guns yeah there you go and just 80s hits galore and it's like yeah. you might not know their name but you have seen them regardless. yeah yeah i mean and i think that's what that's what kind of part of the magic was is that you know when i talked to to debbie debbie manweller who's the casting agent um she and, and her i can't remember her partner name that passed away but the two of them had such she an was a eye nice gal in the yeah years. they had set they had such an eye for either people that had been had done some stuff and people that had done very little and they could see the potential in somebody like alicia cuthbert or somebody like uh sarah clark who hadn't done a whole lot either totally they just said hey you are giving off this vibe you know uh, we shouldn't have to audition anymore you gotta do this and when i saw who it, it was already not really all that surprising like in the first four seasons how everyone pretty much auditioned for each other's roles and eventually right. you got yep. on the show somewhere they remembered yep. it they just didn't have time to figure out you know how to fill all the roles because they you know didn't know if the show would even take off at first <laughs> yeah yeah well i mean and i'm a, i was a big fan coming in of mr show and i can't i think i was i think i was already into mr show by the time 24 started to air um, so you knew mary lynn i knew mary lynn from from mr <laughs> show so i was like this is great like they, they they brought her in season five to me again this is just my opinion you can take it or leave it Season five to me was the the season that solidified her part in 24. Because yeah. I believe that she, and I asked, I, I asked Kiefer and I asked, I haven't talked to Mary Lane yet, but I, talk, I asked Kiefer, I said, did you, did you even anticipate that she was going to be such a big part of the show? He's like, no, I, I really didn't. He said, but he literally, again, this, this is going into the future, which we're not going to talk about, but like she is so much at the heart of 24 in so many ways. Um, you know, when I said Jack, the, the people that Jack trusts, there's nobody arguably he trusts more than than Chloe uh, throughout the whole run. You know, Absolutely. the whole time. The, the and, trust grows. He thinks she's bizarre, certainly, but he literally comes out of hiding to save her life in season five. Totally. She yeah. and some of these other cast members had been on Larry Saunders and yeah, Mr. Show. Yeah. And uh, the same year, she was in a similar hacker role in. The movie firewall with harrison ford and that's right i forgot Miss about Sunshine that and yep totally and i just, so i'm just like by that point her star is just exploding she's on all the talk shows and yeah just yeah a humorous just bit parts and it's just so wild how she's been on the scene for a while but everyone just was just taking a while to just remember her and i don't know how she hasn't aged in 20 years like she looks yeah. pretty much the same as she always has like now pretty wild how it works Uh, deal deal with the devil i don't know but but yeah (laughs) i i feel that i feel that season five solidified because he literally came out of hiding um to protect her even though the other people were already gone as far as he knew we'll return after these messages hello and welcome to culture shocked the pop culture podcast brought to you by four aging millennials and our outdated opinions Join us every Tuesday as we discuss movies, TV, games, and even music, new and old. Dude, what do you think you're doing? Are you seriously trying to record a promo without us right now? Well, uh, yeah. Dude, you can't just do the promo by yourself. Who's going to listen to that? Yeah, and you probably haven't even told them that we're a pop culture podcast where we always agree on everything. Uh, For instance, the Sam Raimi trilogy easily being the best of the Spider-Man movies. J- no, no. But I think we can all agree that Jaws is a classical masterpiece. Mm, nope, don't like that. But we do all agree that the sequel trilogy of Star Wars is the best in the Skywalker saga, right, guys? That comment is so ridiculous. I don't even know where to. Anyways, be- uh, that'll do it from all of us here at Culture Shock. Thanks for listening. 
Hey, it's Brent Pope, the host of Breakfast with Brent Pope. You've seen me on some of your favorite TV shows saying things like, give it up, Jimmy. You got to sink this putt to win. On Breakfast with Brent Pope, I sit down with guests from the entertainment world and we do it all over breakfast. Or should I say breakfast? Every week on Breakfast, you get inside Hollywood info and tips, great breakfast wrecks and booty debates. Most of all, you get the most delightful 30 minutes of your week. So dig in. It's breakfast time. Listen at breakfast.com, Apple Podcasts, or wherever fine podcasts are found. Do you ever find yourself thinking about who would win in a fight between Goku and Superman? Hi, I'm James Gavsey, and on the Who Would Win show, me and my co-host Ray ignore anything important happening in the outside world and debate fictional battles between characters from comics, movies, and video games. We got a new show every week, and almost always, am I the winner? <laughs> yeah, not true, Ray. In the past, we've discussed such matches as Captain America versus Darth Vader, Solid Snake versus the Iron Giant, classic matchups like RoboCop versus Terminator, and even the Muppets versus Sesame Street. That one was crazy. So if you're a fan of geek culture and love a spirited debate, check out the Who Would Win Show wherever you get your podcasts or check us out at whowouldwinshow.com. We let things pile up in the DVR. We add them to our queues. We wait for the DVDs and Blu-rays. We time shift. The Time Shifters podcast sci-fi horror fantasy superheroes comedy action film television maybe some not so current events find us on itunes or at timeshifterspodcast.com cool thing about blind knowledge is we are in multiple countries we are worldwide all across the globe we are in the u.s we are in the uk we are in canada germany india japan we're in australia y'all blindknowledge.com now back to the feature presentation. And, and again, I'm, I'm going to plug. I'm going to flip my interview with uh, Carlos Bernard because he Tony tells us, he tells he tells the story of how that season went and uh, his conversation he had with the with the creators that kind of changed his whole arc. Was he just like did his Hazebury where he's like, I'm not sure I want to even come back. Fuck you guys. Or was no, he, he was, actually he was open? no he was dead. He was on the page. He was dead. And he he said he pulled Howard aside and said, "Do you really do you think it's a good idea just to just to get rid of me completely?" Uh, <laughs> and he said he said, "Wouldn't it be more interesting if I won revenge for my wife dying?" And he said he said Howard Howard said to him on the phone, "Let me get back to you on that." <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so he basically talked his way out of being fired. He was he he Costanza's Costanza his way. Out of being fired, he from totally did. He absolutely pulled a Seinfeld and just said, "Hey, I, you know, I'm gonna be here and there and be yeah. everywhere." <laughs> and because I, I, I just recently read the interview with the with uh, Dennis Haysbert that he was upset of how he went. Yeah, if he did it now, he would have said, "Nope, done. <laughs> Figure yeah, it out." Yeah. Whereas all he had to do was make a call to Howard Gordon. The show is just <laughs> good at just knowing how to break the rules, while other shows will break the rules and kind of just. Yeah force them down your throat without yep. giving you time to process it you know this one is pretty good at yeah of course that's what happened idiot <laughs> <laughs> 24 is set in new detroit that's all i'm gonna say oh or, or delta city or delta city as it would be maybe it could now, become a cyberpunk type movie uh, uh, i think packing. i think the poss- i think the possibilities are endless the, the best mm. american horror story season was the first season because they did crazy stuff that you'd probably never seen on TV. Like just, just crazy storylines. And 24 is the same way. Doing a split screen and having it happen in real time is one of the most revolutionary things, arguably, that's ever been done on TV. So much so that nobody's tried to do it since, right? Yeah, it's like, how do you out-crazy the crazy plot twist? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, they, they, it was like my convention. Like, it was the craziest thing I've ever done. But the idea of even tackling a show that was going to run 24 hours... And had all the logistics involved in in doing that it must have been insane, and so that's why season been. that's why season one for me is is it was just so different and groundbreaking. And seeing Dennis Hopper on TV for the first time, and yeah, he was Keith a totally different TV. role from like Speed, where you're just like, okay, yeah. everybody's just gonna ham it up and have the bombs go off. I'm like, yeah, it's a little more subdued. He's more suspenseful and murderous here. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's nasty. He's he's not a nice guy. And you can level. let the accent go because you know. You know, uh, you know, it's just, he's just a larger than life persona. You can only escape yeah. so many. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, and, and and at that point, 
TV and movies didn't cross over. Like it's it's kind of notorious that Kiefer had been told growing up uh, that TV was where you go to die. And if you watch like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, that that's what that whole movie is about. It's about Leonardo DiCaprio's character going to TV because movies don't want him anymore. Mm-hmm. And in 2001, it still felt like that. But by 2004, 2005, you had it's Claire totally Danes. Like yeah, you had Claire Danes doing Homeland. You had you know all these people that had been on movies. That Kevin Costner got this- paid thirty million. Yeah. Thirty million to be on paid- Yellowstone. Everyone's Did still he even making that much. Holy yeah, cow. everyone's still making four hundred for the day, and he gets paid thirty million an episode. He's, Which did I mean I'm a Yellowstone fan. Um, I almost gave up on it a couple times, but same like this mini this new spinoff took me a while to get into. I'm like I don't know. Okay, halfway through yeah. the second episode, I'll give it a, a, yeah. a take. But yes, that's another I'm not, show. I, 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 I'm not a Kevin. I'm not a Kevin Costner fan at all, except I love him on Yellowstone. Which that's is a good point bizarre. too, because like he in like free movies he doesn't play Kevin Costner and. Right. I think that's the other thing too. I had pals who, I kid you not, they never cared for Kiefer Sterling. I, I know. Sure. Lo and behold, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, for real? You don't, you Stand don't by me? Lost yeah. Boys? What? For whatever reason, yeah, they didn't either care for those movies or Phone Booth or whatever, but they liked yep. them on this. And at this point, they, they just accepted it as their kind of 80s, a serious version of the 18. I'm like, okay, interesting. Right. Who, sure. Who would have known? So, I, yeah, I wouldn't have thought about that, but yeah, you're right. Actors evolve over time, and it is interesting seeing what roles won everyone over for life and what other roles it took everyone a while to get into and I, yeah. i'm still facing it i even saw some people who said i'm not too big a fan should i watch designated survivor i'm like uh absolutely <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly exactly well do you, do you watch it do you watch yellowstone at all oh totally i okay I'm all the first the first 15 minutes of this the season that just ended the first 15 reminded me of the beginning of season five of 24 that's a very good way of putting it, because like we we had such a giant aftermath with season three and four of Yellowstone, and the same thing kind of here is like yeah yeah uh, they film it all back to back and uh, most of it at least, and they knew where it was going to go, and so fortunately shows are also getting better at not firing a lot of the same cast and crew. I'm like that's good because right. a lot. I would say I've, I've been an extra on shows before and it would get okay. annoying when you would see certain directors and producers and even it's wild how some behind the scenes crew guys will just be so blunt and just share their yeah. unfiltered opinion. I'm like, for real? Jeez, that's not cool. Everyone wow. should yeah. love working with each other. <laughs> yeah. 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 It, it, when you go back and when you watch the footage, the footage from our convention is going to be available within the next month or so. Uh, where people where people are going to be able to see it online um and and each each of the panels or nine panels you will see on 24 a group of people that are just so happy to be together again like it, i called it a love fest because yeah they've it's, been so busy there's like got to take some time off and actually just be with each other <laughs> yeah yeah like we it was it was the surprise of being in a room together like somebody would pop in sean calorie would pop in and people like sean and it's like they would stop and just gush about oh you were so great and like like i remember there was there's one there's one part where sarah winter who played kate warner love her she stops and she says to annie worse she says i don't know you but i love everything you do and i'm just like are you kidding me right now like we helped bring this thing together where people could just openly respect each other's work like this is it was it was a magical day it really was yeah, because usually there's always just that one person who's like, well, I started with him. I, I don't want to see him again. Exactly, or, exactly. Or I'm I, jealous. And, and, I, and, I'm, and I asked that question. I asked everybody that question. Is, is there anybody you don't want to be on a panel with? Like, is there is there blood somewhere? I don't want to find out on the day of that you yeah. can't stand this person. And I didn't have anybody. Like, I asked everybody that same question. and I didn't get one response and said, nope, I don't want to be on with you know, any. They really are... The, a generous and gracious group of people and there was no ego in the room which That's again wonderful. you, you kind of hope for that but it doesn't usually happen and the best actors are the ones that show up even on the day where they're not filming just to go for the scenes with people and i right. heard about so many actors will just refuse to do that because hey i get it yeah. personal life and everything but like this whole cast they were still doing that we talked about in season three and four according they to were. special features they it doesn't matter if it's a phone scene it's like they would still at least hang out in each other's trailers and I think it also just helped that they're just, we're just professional friends. They, they all had a giant theaters, 
uh, experience and yep. been on soap operas and bit parts in big movies like James was in Falling Down. Uh, yeah. Again, Dennis has the Allstate and the, his new show, The Unit, coming out mm -hmm. and yeah. at that time. And yeah, everyone else was doing shorts and then all other kinds of guest spots. And uh, I think by this point that, you know, uh, just all these other guest stars on here were pretty incredible because you had just a mixture of B-movie faces, even just voice actors. And the main Russian separatist guy, uh, Julian Sands, that Julian Sands, casting. Yeah. Because yes. I guarantee you, he got more recognized from doing this in Smallville. And he was just kind of known as the guy who like gets mugged and leaving Las right. Vegas and the villainous, uh, you know, uh, male witch and the warlock horror yep. movies. So it was like, yeah, it, it, to see him at this second, maybe third stage of his career and he's just this ruthless russian guy and i think uh, everybody almost everybody all of was, them yeah i think red everybody at red what get some star trek people in there get some csi and law and order guys and then yeah. eventually even get someone who's just been on some lowbrow or cult show like babylon 5 or yeah Black well, I, Rangers. <laughs> well, every all all of Clarence Boddicker's crew showed up on Twenty Four at some point, including Clarence Boddicker yeah, and Claire, and Peter yeah. and Peter Weller. But then, oh, Peter Weller. <laughs> but I think a bigger connection is, is the Star Trek connection. There's totally. so many people on Twenty Four that had done that had done Star Trek or one of the Star Trek iterations, one of the giant um, movies, or at least a giant recurring role. And yeah, yeah. I know I know Kassar before the director. He he pretty much oversaw. As a second producer, he would always forward some actor for the producers to yeah, yeah. do. And I knew he was a giant Star Trek fan, hence why he yeah. took Orville. But yeah, I mean, Manny Koto, like so many, Brandon Braga, all those people all were those all people. part of all yeah. part of Star Trek, including like Glenn Marsh. I think Glenn Marsh was on an episode. Oh, he's on a bunch of them, yeah, and, yeah. and you know, often in heavy makeup. And it helped yeah. also that um, I think they did look at fan fictions and. That's where they would have people like sell them a few scripts ideas. So they did work outside the lines on a few other right, things. Right. And it was cool even seeing how like David Fury noted oh, how he yeah. had come, you know, straight from Lost and he had already worked with Gordon on the various Buffy and Angel shows. And so he's like, when he got the call to work on this, he's like, I'm going to do my damn just to yeah. <laughs> have he left, another He left Lost after, after they won the Emmy. He left Lost to come to Twenty Four. Like Lost yeah. is still going. Like that's Lost like, still going. You don't leave it. You don't really leave an Emmy-winning show to join something else. But oh, totally. And the Emmys had really changed pretty well at that point. Sopranos was still getting nominated. Yeah. Uh, Jericho was kind of all the rage on the cult TV show scene, and then yeah. you had Battlestar Galactica is taken off. It was like cable yeah. TV hasn't answered all the pay channels and the network mm -hmm. channels. So uh, it was a cool way to just see that there was some. And my folks watched a bunch of Battlestar when it was on, and I, yeah. I saw how it was possible to just get consumed by a new show with a recurring uh, a storyline and not get bored with it, and I just want to look forward to it every time. It was every TV was definitely at this point feeling like a movie. Yeah, yeah. Well, they they'd up they'd up the level, they'd up the uh, the stakes. Twenty four totally did. I give twenty four complete credit for that too, because. Because if you ask somebody from 24, Kiefer's a perfect example. He's, I said, I brought that up. I said, do you think 24 changed TV? He said, well, St. Elsewhere did, and so did Hill Street Blues. Like, he, he constantly defers it. You know, he's a very humble man. He did not want to say 24 changed TV, but I'm willing to say 24 changed TV for the better. I because definitely made you're me watching, realize you do have to t pay attention, you know? Yeah, you're watching a movie. Every week you watched a movie. You weren't watching the TV show. Because there were many series I had seen at that point, like Band of Brothers and yeah. Roots, and so it was like, okay, cool. Yeah. But yeah, this isn't just a uh, six episodes and done. Now it's, it's, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's it's. I think I it was. I watched the footage yesterday, and at one point, I again I was really tired too. But I really I thanked the the creators of the show for making David Palmer black. I said that was a significant for as a black man. That was significant to see that on screen. I said, oh, I can't more tell you. Or less. How. Yeah, that when they talked about how they think they opened up some discussions for, absolutely, uh, for for Barack Obama is like maybe, they absolutely but did. it had yeah. been talked about for a while. But more or less, I think, I mean, 
he'll definitely go down as one of the best actors to have played a president on TV. Absolutely. Sure. He's I mean, still he's still the president people want. Like if if if, if uh, Dennis Haysbert put his hat in the ring for 2024, I bet you he'd get in. That would be a very interesting thing because yeah, it is like if Martin Sheen did that and be like, well, he'd be like, well, he's too old. If you did it with Tia Leone on Madam Secretary, he'd be like, right. well. I'm not sure she wants to actually do it. She's just a comedic, dramatic actress. And so yeah, I was like, would he do it? And I know he said, oh, I'm, hell no, I'm just an actor. But you never know. You know, he might just say no. <laughs> here's, here's what I want. Haysbert, Louis Dreyfus, 2024. Oh, there you go. The Veep connection. So, nice. I don't know that Selena was ready for the presidency, but uh, she made a great Veep. Plausible implausibility. It's just like, yeah. okay. Yep. Yes. Let's say someone can do a lot of things in one day. Generally, most people can't. But Let's just say that Jack has his Delta Force training, you know, put to use, and uh, you know, everyone's. Are, are you are you a Bond fan at all? I am. Uh, okay. Were you still pretty caught up on that franchise by that point? Goldeneye. Okay, Goldeneye comes out, and I think I saw it in the theater. No, 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 I it, no, I saw it in the theater, and I was with a buddy of mine, and nice. uh, we saw Goldeneye, and the scene was. Uh, the, the airplane goes off the side of a cliff and uh, James Bond, who's Pierce Brosnan at that point, rides the bike over the side of the cliff. He lets go of the bike, his, his motorcycle, and then he catches up to the plane that's going down and he climbs inside the plane and he writes the plane so he brings it back up so it doesn't crash, okay? Nice. That's how, that's how that movie opened up. Oh, yeah. And, and, and that's uh, before you get to the factory escape and infiltration. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he somehow gets flies down faster than the plane was dropping and he's able to catch it up and i looked at my friend and i said oh come on and he literally looked at me and said there's the door he said if you want reality you cannot watch this movie with me if you just like just sit and shut up and watch the movie we, we're going to be good friends forever we still are but it was the best piece of advice he gave me because it was like really i'm going to analyze you know a james bond film no of course not i'm going to take it for what it's worth yeah so when, it... so when 24 comes around I did. I put all those thoughts out of my head. How long it takes? I've been to LA. I know how long it takes to get from end to end. Uh, but I you can know, throw you can that only out do the so many knockouts and punches yeah. and bruises. We get it. And at the same time, I mean, James Bond's the same way. It's like should have yeah. probably already gotten an AIDS infection. And how did yeah. 006 fake his death? <laughs> Not showing point blank in the head, but whatever. And yeah, I mean, that's, that's, it's the same thing with any kind of show. It's like why yeah. would you? And it's interesting how most why people would I pick it apart. Well, and I don't know why it has to be a different genre for people to realize don't take in the same thing. I'm like, just look at the mm. tone and everything. Like, there's serious comedy, and then there's, you know, campy comedy. You know, it's like, right. and it, it, some people just can't tell the difference. And same thing with action. I think, much like horror, you know, I, I don't think it, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of bad ones. And oh, sure. that push people's buttons, and you go, I, I just got bored as all get out <laughs> after the first few gore or car explosions. And, I think that's just it. It's like, this is just breaking through some ground because it's like, it's drama and the action is, again, kind of as good as the Terminator movies where it's yeah. just from one extended chase scene to the next to, and you're looking forward to it as opposed to, like, I'll give you an example. Like, if you get to Lethal Weapon 3 or 4, right. you take out five of those action scenes, you don't lose anything in the movie except just content, you know? Exactly. Yep. And you, you still have a fr entertaining movie. It's just you have it all full blown as testosterone is like on steroids. So it's like, right. Right. It's interesting how it's just when people have so much freedom, they can, that uh, they will go bonkers and go off there. Yeah. I have, to, I have to trust the sensibilities of the great, the late great Richard Donner on the lethal weapon films. Right. And I have to trust the sensibilities of like a John Cassar or a Brad Turner to know what to do and how to make it, you know, like and I, I, I trust, I trust what they do. And he's such, Brad is such an undervalued talent. Just having yeah. worked on various other shows like the Stargates and yeah, various other mystery uh, of the week movies, you know, from Canada and yeah, uh, yeah. When when he came on and would direct like half the season, he would do a lot of the same stuff that he echoed in his other work, where he just knew how to just kind of. I think that's just it. Everyone, I mean, that's why the season five had some good special features that not only showing the production design, but how every actor pretty much gets their moment in the sun. And mm -hmm. it's just, it's just a great rehearsal from then on. Yeah. Brad Turner is another great director. Like,
like a really like John Cassar. There's so many Kevin Hooks. There's so many people that came out of out of 24 that if the it's for me 24 is like a barometer. Okay, if I know this person was involved, I'm gonna watch it. Just because I know the level of quality that it takes to be even a, a part of the 24 team. So when Brad Turner does an indie film, I'm watching it. When John Cassard shoots Forsaken with uh, Donald and Kiefer Sutherland, I'm in. Like I don't need to. I don't need to watch the trailer to decide whether I'm going to watch it. Whereas there's so many other shows coming out all the time that I have to have. I have to have some kind of barometer to even gauge whether I want to spend time watching. Yeah, before it inevitably or... gets canceled, or yeah, has... oh yeah, yeah, you get or you get into something and find out it's you know it gets canceled the, and they didn't wrap up the story. That's, it's I just hate frustrating that. when it gets to that, but yeah, yeah, exactly. Lone gunman. I mean, and and again, part of the reason, Sarah, I keep going back, but the reason we celebrated the twenty years was because Smallville came and went. I mean, all these shows that came out in the same year, Scrubs. Scrubs was a huge cult hit, right? They didn't. Do, I didn't hear they did anything for the twenty years. Nothing. We wanted to they, we wanted to make sure that the twenty years of twenty four we the bonus was the actual pilot date was on a Saturday last year in in November so it was a day that people were free and we only had two people that couldn't make it two actors that had that booked other gigs James Morrison had booked something and couldn't get away guy. yeah um, and there were there were only two out of like forty something that that couldn't make it that day but I just it just bugged me to think that. The 20 years was going to come and go, and, and certainly Fox wasn't going to do anything about it. Uh, and I honestly yeah. hope that they wouldn't, because they they thought about it as it got closer, and then we were we were already in full swing at that point. Yeah, in so. studios, if they just feel like it's not going to get all that much attention, they will just forfeit it. And the last thing you yep. want to run into is a copyright war, saying, "Well, you why weren't we invited? Or we're having sending you a cease and desist because it wasn't with our permission." <laughs> when you get that <laughs> involved in. And so, like you say, is like sometimes you just got to remind studios: be thankful for what you have. People do still continually rewatch it. It's kind of like uh, when we talked about Deadwood and Oz; like those were shows right, that HBO right. forgot were were great, and they're too busy complaining about shows that they're not happy to have, like Sex and the City and Sopranos. And then there's still promoting those more and more, even doing movies of them. Like that's stupid. <laughs> right, right. Take pride in what you do and what you promote, and I mean, well, I'll, I'll share with you a really surreal moment that it still makes me laugh or blows my mind that I haven't talked about publicly. But the week before we went live with our event, uh, Brian Grazer's office called us really? and, and, and said, can we can we come to the event? <laughs> like, uh, yeah, uh, please. We would have um, liked to have invited you, but you guys were busy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and it was it was like it was um crazy and it didn't work out he did schedule wise it just couldn't we couldn't uh find a time that yeah was he's got to make 50 popular. different phone calls so exactly <laughs> he probably does 50 of those events every saturday um but it was it was just the idea that they called us just to see if they, if they could get permission to come i'm like are you kidding me like oh my god i'd love to have you as a surprise yes but yeah it's wild how it, it is and, weird how it goes it's kind of like if I don't know if you invited a few people at a reunion at a convention and then I don't know, someone just showed up and said, Hey, can I be featured on the poster also? Like, yeah, I'd yeah, love yeah. to have done this, but come on. Yeah. Yeah. And Mary Lynn joined like three days before we went live. She, she got back Sweet. to us and said, can we, can I, can I, again, people were saying, can I come to this thing? It was crazy. It was crazy. <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait. I cannot wait for everybody to see the footage. Like if you, if you are a fan, you'll love it. If you're not a fan, you're going to go, oh, my gosh, I recognize this person from The Walking Dead. I recognize this person from, from Mandalorian. Like, it's – your your mind will be blown either way. Totally. Yeah. Um, I don't know any actor who's hated anyone on here. I know Carlos Bernard played a prank on the Mandy actress, Mia Kirshner, and so that was just one of those, well, at least we're just in one episode together. <laughs> right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and he just was told John, hey – don't fuck around like that again. You've actually brought actual cops out here. That's part right, of it. Right. What are you thinking? And right. I know Freddie Prince Jr. mouthed off and like, it's all right. He was just a recurring guest star. <laughs> yeah, we 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 vowed to be Prince free. That was <laughs> that was that was the one thing we said. Cause we because again, we get close to the event and people are just saying, Hey, can we join? And there were a couple of people that just it wouldn't fit. It really didn't fit a panel or whatever. We had there were a couple we had to say no to, not very many. 
but we were we were vowed from day one. Our whole team was like, this will be a Prinz free event. We will not discuss, <laughs> we'll not discuss Cole, we'll not discuss that whole time because he was he he publicly made a lot announced of announced the show and this yeah. is like Jesus. And we don't want that energy. Well, yeah, there's no need for it. I mean, and as much as we like James Cromwell as an actor, you know, we're definitely not going to invite him to this. You know, this is like right, right. he's not proud of his role on here, and we'll, we'll get to that here in a bit. But it's yeah, just right, like, right. You don't want to invite people to it, even if it's and I mean, when we do our Scooby Doo reunion, he'll he will invite him to that. Oh, no, that's fine. You can invite <laughs> Freddie to that. That's what do you that's do you? But happen. yeah, it's, we we ne- we never cajoled. We never tried to convince anybody they needed to do the podcast or to be at the convention. We just asked. Yeah, and I think that's just it too. I think that's why we often get some of these inappropriate interviews on displays, just because someone feels pressured into doing it, yeah, and yeah. it's just on a day where it's just not their best day, as much as they've gotten decent and, sleep. And some stuff gets taken out of context. Like it really, like it really does. Oh yeah, comic book movie is the worst. It's just, yeah, just like yeah. you guys are the Fox News of freaking just every <laughs> kind of movie reporting. It's just like true. As someone didn't even remotely say that. Like, uh, they had like a top ten battles in this one movie franchise. I'm like, they didn't even remotely. I think they just went for YouTube and just skimmed the first five results that came up. <laughs> of course, yeah, yeah. Well, and that's that was another piece of advice that John Cassar gave us. Again, I asked him so many stupid questions. You know, once he's he got so fully patient. on board, he's so patient. <laughs> and I said, you know, like he said, he said, our moderators shouldn't be just people that are good at speaking or moderating. They should actually know the show. And so I, I, I had to relook at my list of moderators. And then I went for my hardcore fans and I and I brought them in to do the moderating. And the moderating was so much better because it wasn't just like they were listing a series of questions that they didn't really know the history of the show. They knew the show in and out. And it, it it made a huge difference when I rewatch it now that they they could think on the fly and ask uh, Howard Gordon a question that wasn't on the list because they knew Howard Gordon's involvement. So that was that was I mean, John gave me such great advice, you know, in in doing this whole thing. Yeah, um, and that, it, it helps that he's come from so many different walks of life just yeah. uh, behind the scenes. And so I think when you've been all that and you see all that, and I mean, you see that one. Uh, panel when they would do like some online Q and A's where he and Marilyn mm-hmm. were invited on her first year and she was just a nervous wreck and he had to say you did great and she was yeah. like really and so yeah. it was so interesting how pretty much just got a I think he's also just one of those he knows any actor can work in a scene it's mm-hmm. just how yeah. you use them yeah. and he he wasn't going to be one of those let's fix it in post with the editors give them more to work is like no not yeah. I'm I'm going to work this out with them and. I do know he said in a bunch of stuff, like especially during the redemption make making out, where he's like, I can only pretty much storyboard like the big giant explosions and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. so it's like everything we gotta stage and rehearse and then shoot, because I don't want to risk having all the cameras just coming to each other's line or eyesight by accident and yeah, yeah. actors bump into them. So it is very interesting how they may were able to make that work for a multi-camera show. Well, I mean he, there's a reason why he's continuing to do successful work like the Kennedys and to do the Orville and, and I believe his best work is still ahead. I really think there's, cause is going to come up with something that's just going to blow all of our minds. I'm, I'm still trying to get people to watch forsaken. I'm, we're actually, we're scheduling some screenings because that was one of the things that we talked about with him was that a long it, overdue, didn't, it didn't uh, get, it didn't get the push that it needed. Uh, the, the distributor kind of fell, fell through on a lot of things. In the marketing of that. and then he did a very cool hand the rocks the cradle kind of horror thriller oh yeah when the bow breaks yeah when the bow breaks and it was just <laughs> like that was cool and uh he's done some good work on shows like revolution and yep. he talked about how you know the connection there was john favreau who he had worked on with mm-hmm. as a camera operator on the college comedy pcu and now on the orville and they had always kept in touch and he talked about on one of the orville podcasts how he had you know, 24 was great because it was the same people running the show, giving notes. And he only gave one note, especially here in season five, where he's like, hmm, can I land, land the plane this way? Can you change it up a bit? I'm not sure I can, <laughs> you know, get the right permissions and locations, you know, right. on time and shoot it. And uh, it, they obliged him on that because he'd already said yes to everything else. And yeah, it's so wild how they let him back on because I know 
one of the co-creators hated it when the first episode he directed was like in season one and that was an episode where jack eats for the first time he's like no 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 don't ever do that ever again <laughs> no 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 food no water it was like yeah. well, i don't know man i worked for me there but yeah Depri uh, deprivation makes him who he is I, it, it keeps him it keeps him jacked up yeah <laughs> just say it uh, hey good Good shot. We named like the podcast after the. You know, so. I, I I didn't realize that till yesterday. I was very happy. <laughs> I, I knew I was I knew I was talking to the right person. Perfect. I get. Uh, and <laughs> it's just even funnier how, uh, well, like he talked about how he had worked on other shows like Terra Nova, and he's like, basically, the writing room changed like twelve different times on that. So it was very confusing right and he felt like it got going as soon as it got canned so it's like it's interesting to see that because you don't really i don't know a lot of people are nervous to talk about that because they're afraid of you know unintentionally naming names and everything it was like mm -hmm. it right. is the reality of the business is like there are shows where it's like we we did as good a job as we could on it but it's not 100 percent. or it, given the budget given the time constraints yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it's an incomplete absolutely. movie and <laughs> yeah lost the time yeah no it's Time. uh <laughs> times well, that we don't have <laughs> i'm still trying to find la femme nikita to watch i can't find it i really want to see it i might just have to send you the dvds i will oh wow if you hear the soundtrack by sean calorie is like yeah that's only, totally oh, why he got asked back for 24 he, oh, only if you have a, an extra set never never send me the originals because I, I value my original set of 24 so much that so that I bought an extra set. No, I know what you I mean. Have, I, I have multiple sets. Uh, and it, I, I put it this way. is like, if I'm not going to watch it again anytime soon, I'm going to share the entertainment value. But yeah, there are some of those where it's like, yeah, I can't even find an online copy of it. I might have yeah, to yeah. rip well, it before I, to my computer before I give it to someone else. Here's another surreal moment. Um, we got an email from John from Joel Cernow, who, as far as we had been told, he's lived in the desert for the last five, six years. He's out of yeah. the business, he's gone. And he we were like, Hollywood okay, and said, well, screw it, I have my best, and yeah, more. yeah, leave on top. So, all of a sudden, Kassar gets involved, and then we get an email from Joel Cernow saying, Hey, can I come to the event? And we're like, Yeah, of You're course, the creator, yeah. and then four days before, or five days before, he says, I get, a, I get a call from Joel Cernow. And he says, hey, since we've got all the Nikita people, can we do a panel on Nikita and just do it an hour early? He's asking my permission to do it. <laughs> You're like, and, shit. <laughs> and I said, I don't even, I, in my head, I'm saying, I don't even, I haven't even seen Nikita, but of course, what do you, what do you want? We'll you you can it. brush up quickly with a bunch of people and just ask about how did you yep. feel about the evolution of your character? But I know what you mean. Yeah, it wasn't <laughs> easy to get access out. Like after it was off USA Network, it kind of just disappeared and... Yeah, so so, so we got so we got what you'll see when the when the footage is available. Carlo Rota becomes my moderator because Carlo was on Nikita. He was he got, so good on this season as Chloe's ex. Oh, amazing! Turned husband again because, but yep. yeah, it was funny. He had started off just like as like multiple different villains of the week on La Femme Nikita, yeah. and Sir uh, Sir now kept using in other shows he was doing. Uh, uh, Kassar used him in a disaster TV movie with Eric Roberts and Alexandra Paul. I'm like, oh, so yeah. Eric Roberts again. There Sorry. we go. Got to have a connection. <laughs> I'm surprised he or any other person. I don't, I don't know how Eric Roberts missed 24. It's funny how that worked. I, I think had it been a giant like movie or TV budget, uh, it would have been actually Judd was Nino. Uh, yeah. And Defoe was jack bauer and andre <laughs> Breyer was president palmer that's my dream cast and tommy lee jones would probably be like the mentor or george <laughs> yeah i can see that. i gotta bring you in jack this is <laughs> not my rehash of the fugitive and peter peter stormare as uh as uh, uh dennis hopper's character drew a blank oh <laughs> peter 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 stormare the draisons as one of the Drazens, Peter Stormare would have been a, made a perfect uh, Andre Drazen. Oh, uh, Peter Stormare or Victor would, uh, yeah, yeah. You guys might know him from various stuff like Armageddon and Prison Break, but and Fargo. But yeah, he would have been. He would have eaten up the scenery. Probably even nailed the accent better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What yeah. are you doing here with my son? <laughs> the sons of a bitch. <laughs> yes, he's, Peter Stormare is one of my favorites too. And again, he's one that I'm surprised wasn't on Twenty Four. Oh, totally. Speaking so. of language, language, did you notice 
Yeah, okay, so do you think there are more dammits in these two seasons than the other seasons combined? It's you I don't know, I count more sons of bitches and bastards. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, I, I, I think I think the apex of the dammits was season four because that was when Kiefer had found out about the drinking game. And yeah, he, okay, that makes better sense. So he was doing it on purpose. Yeah, for, by by four, he definitely was aware. Is like, okay, I mean, <laughs> as I'm going to be here a while. This is not going off the TV. <laughs> Which must have must have pushed up ratings because you'd have to watch it twice because you were probably blacked out from drinking yeah, during the episode. They're still doing the whole thing where it's on after something like American Idol or a giant ass sports game, and so <laughs> yeah, it was interesting how it was just kind of that. Uh, just people would actually stay up late and do something like that. And I, I know my yep. folks used to do that with something like X-Files. And so it's like, it is funny how that would happen. We're just like, yeah, if there's anything we're staying up for, it's going to be a show where we actually want to see what happens, not just because it's on because it's on, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I- event TV. That's and really it, what it it's is. kind of a shame that Kassar, I, I know uh, he liked an episode of Criminal Minds. I think he would have been perfect right. to helm the rest of the franchise, and he just didn't. He just wasn't digging it. It just didn't have that. I found I always liked it because it was very similar to Twenty Four, and he is like, yeah, but it's still kind of there's not as much freedom. So I don't think he yeah. liked that. And here he got the ultimate freedom, and he would, you know, who would give that up? Why would you give freedom? Well, up? that's and that's one of the running, again, running commentaries of the actors that were on Twenty Four that have gone to do other shows. And then they're like, I didn't realize how good we had it on 24. Yeah. I, because, I left too soon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I left too soon. And, and I, can't impro- so I can't sh- improvise. I yeah. can't improvise like I could on 24. Yeah, Kassar should not have quit during season eight. He should have stayed with it, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, there were some episodes where the Mylon Shalev guy who had done some of season seven where it's like, right. I don't feel like you have an original voice in this episode. You're just doing what Brad helped you set up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, 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 it would also be a hard show to come into and, you know, try to, and literally try to live another day. Chore- literally yeah. try to. Well, to and even look down. at the, how the fights and presidential exposition, like the presidential stuff is totally tossed out in that season. And, right. Yeah. And there isn't, like, the fights are quickly done so fast to, in the dark to where it's hard to see them. And you're like, well, usually. You see a lot of realistic choreography on screen. And right, right. You just punch someone in the face with a rifle and there's no blood on his nose. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah. You, if you didn't have streaming or watch it on Fox.com the next day, you know, you mm. didn't have access to this or Hulu. And no. You had to buy the DVDs. And if you didn't like season one, you know, why would you buy season, you know, two through four? And, you know, yeah. I made good on it. I saw them online and then I bought the DVDs and introduced my folks and grandmother too and and nice. i was like see grandmother we got someone else besides NCIS to watch <laughs> that's right <laughs> um it, it's you're, interesting. You're, you're doing good work thank you and uh, you did good too you <laughs> i you i it sounds like you loaned out your copies to more people than i ever did i can't tell you how many times i would loan the first two seasons to friends <laughs> <laughs> and not get them back yeah that, oh yeah, i got them back for the too. most part but yeah <laughs> <laughs> There were a few, but those guys were just idiots. You know, I wasn't even friends with. So yeah, whatever. Yeah, Shame yeah. on me for trusting them. But yeah. Um, <laughs> Follow us on the web on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The podcast is available on Podbean, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor, Apple, and anywhere else podcasts are available. Feel free to review our show and leave comments on any of those sites. Thanks a million for listening. It's a jacked up.